Good morning everyone. My name is Professor Alex Ford and I'm a gastroenterologist in Leeds, UK. I'm delighted to have been invited by Professor El Omar to provide this video abstract about our paper currently in press with GUT, Efficacy of Psychological Therapies in Irritable Bowel Syndrome, Systematic Review and Network Meta-Analysis. Irritable Bowel Syndrome is a functional bowel disorder. Typical symptoms experienced by patients with IBS include abdominal pain, disordered defecation and bloating. The condition is extremely common. At any point in time, one in 10 otherwise healthy people in the community will report symptoms compatible with IBS. In most patients, the condition runs a relapsing and remitting course. Longitudinal studies show that approximately two thirds of people with IBS still report symptoms compatible with the disorder during follow-up, even up to 10 years later. IBS has a substantial impact on health services and society as a whole. Patients with IBS may consult doctors in primary care and are sometimes referred on to secondary care. Other costs arise from prescribed and over-the-counter medications, inappropriate investigations, unnecessary surgeries, and for some people whose symptoms do not respond to conventional medical therapies, out-of-pocket expenses related to complementary and alternative therapies. IBS also leads to reduced productivity in the workplace due to absenteeism and presenteeism. Effective treatment of IBS is therefore important for everyone. Our group has a long-standing interest in the evidence-based management of IBS. Over the years, we have undertaken numerous trial-based meta-analyses encompassing a broad range of IBS treatments, including dietary interventions, drug treatments such as antispasmodics and antidepressants, and psychological therapies. These findings have had a wide impact and have informed guidelines for IBS management. We have previously shown that cognitive behavioural therapy, or CBT, and gut-directed hypnotherapy are more efficacious than a control intervention for the treatment of IBS. However, insights gained from trial-based meta-analyses have limitations. In particular, we cannot infer the relative efficacy of one treatment versus another, information which is important to both patients and doctors when choosing treatments. This problem arises because most trials in IBS only compare an active treatment with a control. So although our trial-based meta-analyses demonstrate that psychological therapies may be beneficial in IBS, and national management guidelines suggest they should be used in patients with refractory symptoms, their relative efficacy is unknown. Network meta-analysis is a technique that can bypass these issues to some extent. But how does it work? In simple terms, where two treatments, A and B, share a common comparator, for example, a common control treatment C, but have not themselves been directly compared in a trial, network meta-analysis enables us to estimate the treatment effect between A and B. This is because we already know the magnitude and direction of the effect between treatment A and the shared comparator, control treatment C, from existing trial data and the magnitude and direction of the effect between treatment B and the shared comparator, control treatment C. Network meta-analysis enables us to estimate the treatment effect between A and B indirectly. And by considering all these direct and indirect treatment effects together, we can examine the relative efficacy of all included treatments and develop a ranking system based on probability, according to which is likely to be the most efficacious. We identified 41 eligible trials containing over 4,000 participants, and here we can see the network plot of all the direct comparisons between the active therapies studied, as well as the control interventions used, which included routine care, educational support, dietary or lifestyle advice, or a waiting list control, where the patient receives the active intervention at the end of the trial. After completion of therapy, the psychological interventions with the largest number of trials and patients recruited demonstrating efficacy included self-administered or minimal contact CBT, face-to-face -face CBT and gut-directed hypnotherapy. In terms of control interventions, education and or support was ranked first. Studies that use other control interventions as their comparator may therefore overestimate the efficacy of the psychological therapies in IBS. When we restricted the analysis to the 13 trials that stated that they only recruited patients with refractory IBS, CBT via the telephone, contingency management, hypnotherapy, CBT via the internet and dynamic psychotherapy were all superior to routine care. Here, in trials with follow-up out to 12 months, we can see that self-administered or minimal contact CBT 
stress management, CBT via the telephone, CBT via the internet, gut directed hypnotherapy and group gut directed hypnotherapy all had evidence of longer term efficacy. So in summary, self-administered or minimal contact CBT, face-to-face -face CBT and gut directed hypnotherapy had the most evidence for efficacy although it is important to point out that all trials were at high risk of bias as blinding was not possible due to the nature of the active intervention studied. Although guidelines recommend the use of these therapies in patients with refractory symptoms, evidence to support this is sparse. We therefore believe that future randomised trials should consider studying the effect of earlier intervention with these therapies in the disease course.